Hello, welcome to Conway Video. In this video, I'd like to talk about the concept of DRY, dry, or don't repeat yourself. Uh, and this is a well-known concept in the programming world, in the coding world. And I'd like to talk about why I think it's overvalued, or why I think it's a bit overrated, and uh, what I think a better alternative approach is to, um, to modularization or to breaking up your code or, or not repeating yourself. So uh, let's get started. So um, don't repeat yourself. I guess the idea is that when you're programming or when you're coding, at least the way I understand it, is that you should always have in mind, don't repeat yourself. Always try to write the same, uh, the same code that you write, make it in the same place and keep it in one place. And any code that looks similar, you should try and kind of keep it all together in one place and use one module. And if it has to behave in different ways, maybe you have to pass different inputs to a function or to a module, but basically try to kind of um, not repeat yourself. So don't have any redundancy or repetition in your code. Uh, now, first of all, if you were to take that idea really completely literally, um, you would find that your code is actually full of redundancies. Um, I mean, come on, we've got the keywords of the language, such as function or class or something or, or variables, the thing you use to declare your variables, maybe it's var. Um, those are all, all over the code. So already you've got tons of duplication in your code. Uh, you've got every first name or last name or date of birth field in your whole code base. Every time you use that, that field name, that's a repetition. So we've got to first step right away from the idea of not repeating ourselves uh, because we're constantly repeating ourselves. Now, that's probably not what that expression really meant, but I just thought I'd kind of start out with that reductio ad absurdum, you know. Um, but I, I guess to go a bit further here, so... Um, don't repeat yourself. What are some of the benefits to don't repeat yourself? So um, there, there are benefits to uh, reusing code, and I guess that's what it's really about. The, the idea of that principle is we want to encourage reusing code. So we want to have one piece of code, uh, so whether it's a function or a class or whatever it is, and we want that code to be used again and again and again. Now, what are the benefits of that? Well, um, you know, I'll play. I'll, I'll, I'll talk about the benefits. So one of the benefits is space efficiency. Uh, your code is going to take less space on the disk, right? So if you had, uh, you know, the same five lines of code repeated, say, a hundred times throughout your code base in all different places, then that's going to take uh, take up more space on your disk than it would otherwise. Now, does that really matter? Uh, you know, it's it, we're in the 2020s. Um, you know, one terabyte thumbnails are becoming more and more common. Thumbnail uh, thumb drives, sorry. Uh, you know, uh, hard disks tend to be 500 gigabytes or more. Really, uh, you know, something like text, uh, repeating text in different parts of your code is really not going to make much of a, a difference. So I would say, first of all, space efficiency is absolutely not a concern. And even if we're talking about memory, we all know that memory capacities and costs have increased and cost has gone down. Basically, Moore's law tells us that space is cheaper and cheaper and cheaper and there are way more important things, way more important things for us to be worried about as developers than keeping the size of our code necessarily small. Now, there are some arguments to be made about the complexity of our code, but uh, I might come back to that a bit later because there are some advantages uh, to modularization in terms of making the code easier to read, more readable, more understandable, and in some ways less complex. Um, but I just first wanted to address the issue of space efficiency. Now, I guess the next issue is, um, well, um, if you keep it all in one place, then that means it's uh, you only have to change it once. So if you ever need to change something that is all throughout your application, you're only going to need to change one, uh, one place, uh, make the change in one place, one code file, and then the change will just automatically just immediately take effect everywhere else. Now, that's a very powerful thing, and you can think of it in your mind as being very powerful and like, oh, I want that. I want all my code to be like that. I want everything I make to be in, done in such a way that I only have to change this one thing, and then everything else that has to change will just automatically be changed. Now, the problem here is that you don't necessarily know ahead of time what part of the code is actually going to be the same. Um, for example, you might have three different forms in your application. And one form is for a, say, a business who is signing up to use your product. And the other form is for an individual, like a person like you or me, signing up to use the product. So you've got these two kinds of, of, of entities signing up. 
And at first, the forms are the same, right? Is there's like the name, uh, you know, the name, the address, or date of birth, so and so. And you might initially think that they're going to be the same form, so they can just be the same, the same module. But then down the track, you start to find that oh, well, business users actually have a different set of features they need. So there are some fields that business people need, and then there are some other fields that an individual needs that a business doesn't need. And so then you end up putting if statements through your code. So you've got this one module called sign up, which caters for both business users and regular users. But that one module, that one form, has all these if statements. It's like, well, if it's a business user, then show this drop down that you know they can choose what kind of business they have. Ah, oh, but if it's not a business user, if it's an individual user, then have this other drop down where or, or this other thing where they can, I don't know, um, put in their social media um, link or something, uh, their personal social media link. And so you end up with this really horrible, difficult to read code because it's full of if statements and switch statements and complicated stuff. And you can see that the two things are different. It would have actually been better to just have them in separate places, the business stuff here and the users here. You know, it's a little bit like, um, you know, um, if you were to put all your clothes into one drawer in the wardrobe, uh, in the uh, in the chest of drawers, like then how would you find different clothes? How would you find your underwear? How would you find your shirts? How do you find your pants? Like everything would be mixed together into one, and you don't want your code to be like that. So I'd say that's one one strike against it. And then uh, the problem, I guess, then is that um, y when you begin to write code, when you begin to solve a problem, you don't know what's going to be reused and what's not going to be reused. And in fact, this problem can occur quite a long, a lot through the software life cycle. It's not just at the beginning when you're write, first writing the code, but this can actually be a problem way down the track in future. Like you might have had the product going for two or three months, and only then someone comes to you and says, "Oh, actually, this thing should be different." And for this kind of case, we want a, a different sort of layout. And so, because that's the case, I think you know, you want to be actually really, really slow and cautious about don't repeat yourself or about trying to put everything in one place. And so I guess this is where I present my alternative. So we've, we've talked about the two problems with don't repeat yourself or the two things that, sorry, that don't repeat yourself is supposed to encourage, but it's actually not much of a benefit. One is space efficiency and the other is, um, oh, well, if I can change it in one place and that change will take effect everywhere and, and that will make me more efficient. But then actually, that doesn't really work very well because you end, it ends up that you were wrong, that it's not the one change that you want everywhere. You actually want things, different things to behave differently. So what's the alternative? I think the alternative is to actually not try not to think about modularization. In fact, you have this is a bit of discipline, I've found. It takes discipline. You have to really force yourself not to think about modularization, not to think about code reuse when you're first starting out. When you're first building that new thing, build a whole new structure just for that thing that you need to create. So if someone comes to you, maybe it's your first day on the job and they say, okay, first task for you is we want you to make this form and it's got these three fields. What's the first thing you do? You don't make a reusable form library. You don't try and make a reusable component. All you do is just make one new component or file that's not intended to be reused more than once and it's just a specific file for that specific form. So if it's a sign up form, you literally just call it sign up form. If it's a uh, uh, I don't know, if it's a billing page, you just call it a billing page and you just put the specific things that you need into that page. And the advantage of that is that, you know, firstly, you can move quickly. You can get that thing built quickly. Instead of wasting all this time thinking about how can I make this perfect general or reusable kind of thing that you don't even know if you're going to need it, just go by the evidence. The evidence is telling you that, you know, right now we just need this specific form. So you want to just build that specific form. And so you, you start very specific and just build a specific structure for what you need, whether it's a class, whether it's a function, whether it's a component, whatever it is. And then over time, as you begin to get more familiar and acquainted with the overall system and where that piece of, of the puzzle fits into the, the rest of the system and also how that, that's going to be used, after you get that understanding, then you can look at your code and you're going to have lots of code that looks the same, okay? But it's like that anyway, right? Our code is going to be full of if state, uh, sorry, it's going to be full of things like keywords, like class and function. It's going to be full of 
variable names like first name and last name that are repeated. So don't worry, let the code be repeated. Do even use the copy paste feature if you have to. Copy and paste another dialog box or something. Uh, copy and paste another form and put it in and make and just change the bits you need to change. Go with the, the repet repetition, it's okay. Because as the specific thing you're building is going to work. You wanna make it work and you're gonna be able to move fast by not thinking about reuse. But then after that, after a while and you've gotten acquainted with the system and where that piece fits in the puzzle, then you begin to modularize. And the way you modularize actually becomes very easy. You can immediately see where something is reused a lot and it's probably gonna be reused a lot more. Say it's, there's, there's three components that are always together and it's always only those three components. And you understand the business well enough and the code well enough to understand these three things are always going to be together. It's very hard to imagine them ever not being together. That's when you then modularize. And then it's easy to modularize because all you have to do is copy and paste one of them, put it in a separate file and call, give that file a name and you should be able to easily name the file now that you understand the purpose of those three things and what they actually do. And so that makes your naming easier. Right, instead of scratching your head and thinking, what do I call this thing? You kind of already know what to call it, you know? If it's the person's account profile buttons, then, or account management buttons, you can just call it account management.cs or .c or .js or whatever. And so you, you can just take that opportunity right there and then split it off. And then all you have to do is just take one copy and paste of one instance, put it in the file, and then the others just reference that same file. And you're done. Easy. And so that that's my kind of... Uh, more pragmatic approach to mod modularization. It's all, I, I always want to wait until I've seen all the instances of something and how they're going to be used and understand them deeper, then I modularize. But very first, at the very first uh, instance when I'm starting out coding something, I always go specific. So anyway, yeah, that's my thoughts about DRY, don't repeat yourself, I think it's way overrated. Copy and paste is a really great thing actually. And uh, it gives you flexibility. It gives you, it can, you can quickly deliver something and you can make the changes you need when you need them without having to go through like tedious if statements and switch statements and try to make this one module do everything. Uh, instead, you just make a specific module for whatever you need uh, at the time. Thanks for watching.